Back hey, once again guy. with the lockdown haircuts. <laughs> um, I sound like you're about to go into a rap. Yeah. <laughs> Hi guys, oh, I wish I hadn't interrupted, I wanted to know how that rap was going to go. Did we decide what my hip hop name was on an earlier vlog? If we did, I've repressed that memory. Okay, fine. Right, well, yeah. Well then we are open to suggestions. Probably uh, renaming myself for my... Uh... Well, ch chop, there's got to be something in chop, chopping and chop, like that's, that's, that suggests a, a certain element of violence potentially, and that could be quite a good yeah. street name. Yeah. Chop. Well, well, you know, because chop or chopper sounds a bit porn. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I definitely don't have a street name. Uh, I'm not allowed one. Not with this accent. Uh, so, no. uh, yeah. Hi, guys. I was raised by the street. <laughs> he also doesn't get to have a street name. And, uh, and my parents. It was like a collaborative effort. <laughs> Between the streets, as in the band The Streets. No, not Mike Skinner <laughs> of the streets. No, my parents and the streets. Right, the streets of the hood. Flitic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hi guys, it is day ninety-one, which is day nineteen of June. Probably... I quite enjoyed the nine one one nine thing going on there. Lovely. It's probably because I was raised by the streets. I ended up uh, in a gang when I lived in Grangetown. <laughs> oh, tell them the name. Oh, I was. I was uh... <laughs> I was the leader of the Grangetown Ne'er Do Wells. <laughs> we, were, we were ruffians. Hoodlums. Yes. Right, little scallywags, I'm sure you were. Damn straight. <laughs> um, yeah, we, you made up, uh, sorry, you confessed to being in the Grangetown Ned Wells when we were quite early on in dating yeah, when you well, tried to persuade me you were street. I, need to, to, <laughs> I needed you to know that, you know, that sort of lifestyle doesn't come without consequences. Don't leave that at the door. Yeah, like, it might. You, you know, never there know. are risks, there are dangers. You know, let you know what you're in for. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thankfully, the repercussions from your time with the Grangetown Ne'er Do Wells have yet to rear their ugly head. But I'm forever alert. A lot of them aren't allowed on the trains. <laughs> Why aren't they allowed on the trains? Oh, a variety of reasons. <laughs> Okay. Let's not get into it. I don't want to get them in more trouble. Right. Um, Fair enough. Yeah. I don't know if a vlog is legally actionable. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Although, yeah. as I say, it'd be very difficult for them to do anything to me that would demand stitches, given that they are the other side of a train route and they're reluctant to get on the bus. So they do not have cars. No. Right. Do they not steal the cars? They're ne'er do wells. <laughs> I was stealing cars. <laughs> Sorry. It's other people's property. I didn't Come mean on. To, I didn't mean to besmirch their I can't reputation. Believe, I can't believe you'd steal cars. I didn't say I'd steal cars. I just thought a real ne'er do well would be all over the theft. Anyway, guys. What's the matter with you? <laughs> Sorry. I know you were some sort of career criminal that I was dealing with. <laughs> I've never stolen a car. Oh. Very specific. What have you stolen? Nothing deliberately. I've accidentally taken things. I accidentally stole a packet of polos from the shop once when I was a kid and I felt terrible. I still ate them though. Um, <laughs> so I didn't feel that terrible. And I, you know when you go up to the shop counter, like I had, I'd like picked up some things and then for some reason I'd like sort of put something under my arm and then I sort of to get my purse out or something. And then I left and then I realised I was holding them and I was like, oh, I'm still holding these. I don't think I paid for these. But I didn't go back. I walked out of a shop once with some socks and I think I would have got away with it except I realised what I'd done and turned back because I didn't mean to do it. I just sort of walked out and I was like, oh, hang on. Yeah. Picked up these socks and just left. <laughs> and went, Did you just forget got, to do the till got, bit? Yep. It got the socks. Cool. Well, next. <laughs> That's what I went That's in where, here for. Yeah. Um, oh, bless. Yeah, no, mind what, I bought other things. Uh, but yeah, I, th I think I just couldn't be bothered. I'd got about halfway home and I just thought, and it, it was quite a long time ago. I remember they were 26p at the time, so it was quite a long time ago. And I remember thinking, do they really care enough? Do I, well, do I care enough about 26p? But then I worked in that shop many years later, and I'm sure I left like some money in the staff room at some point accidentally. So they've had their they've had their profits. Um, I, um... <laughs> anyway, we had loads of stuff to talk about and we've waffled already. Well, also, something we didn't even 
we need to recap because mm. we talked about for your birthday you got a mystery enigmagram. <gasps> enigmagram, yes. So um, you will remember that I highly suspected that this mysterious parcel was from Chris. Yeah, I think somebody owes somebody an apology. <laughs> well, it came, it's anonymous, and when it came, it says, open up, do not open before the 15th of June. I didn't actually open it on the 15th of June because it was a bit busy, guys. Uh, so actually, I opened it the next day uh, in bed, uh, and uh, it was awesome. I will highly recommend them. Uh, the trouble is, I don't, well, I don't know, because uh, we'd have to find out from whoever ordered it. Um, but yeah, I don't know if there's different ones so that you can uh, have second no, ones again. I've subsequently done some research into that. All oh, right. Turns out they only have the one at the moment. Right. They are looking into doing because, other yeah, ones in the future. It would so. be quite cool to make a thing of it, but you'd have to say, oh, I've done that. Because it's a set of puzzles, basically. Uh, and they they're all they all have numeric answers. There's about 11 of them. Uh, but some of the answers will be more than one digit long. And you've got to basically get in the right order a long string of numbers that you then put into the website and you get a message from a mysterious benefactor. Um, the reason I thought it was Chris was because he was visibly excited about it I was very and curious. kept bringing it up in con in conversations that had nothing to do with it. I think you were bringing it up. Uh, and uh, when it arrived, and I sort of went, oh, there's an envelope, and it says, to, uh, this was all internal monologue, oh, there's an envelope, it says do not open till the 15th of June, it's probably a birthday card or a birthday gift. So I'll just put it on the mantelpiece and leave it there without note. And then Chris was like, what's what's this thing that, what's this that you've got? This is an interesting envelope, isn't well, it? Ooh, what is it this? A seal on it and everything. It did. Um, I was interested. <laughs> it was interesting. Uh, loved it. Absolutely loved it. Um, Shall I, well, I, I sort of feel like I, I kind of want to keep what the message was yes, to let's, myself. Let's not explain exactly what was in the message, because I feel like it was probably meant as quite a personal right. message. Right, well, what but, I will say yeah. is, if anybody has, ah, oh, they won't have seen it yet, ah, oh no, there's a sketch that we've recorded for the Let's Remake a Film. Not sure how this is relevant. Um, well, uh, in that, we filmed a three-person scene, but there's only two of us, so we had to be imaginative. So we created a thir third person. Um, strikingly similar looking to the person who gave me the message in this message, um, but it wasn't Chris. I think they look almost nothing alike. No, well, just the style in which it was shot, the how the, the end result of what it looked like we'll have to come back to this and recap on this so this is all very cryptic but um yeah. well, to yeah telly celebrity wasn't it it was Since telly celebrity so like, can i say who it was i mean yeah I, i'm sure they wouldn't mind um yeah sophia vergara uh from uh, the modern, family. modern family sent ellie a birthday sent message ellie that she'd recorded quite a so provocative was... birthday nice, message i can't believe you thought it was me it was sophia vergara off of the modern sophia, family get her name right uh, i Adore her. Sophie uh, Vague, as I call her. <laughs> uh, we've watched, we've just finished actually ploughing our way through all of Modern Family. For those of you who haven't watched it, I highly recommend it. It's quite wholesome overall, but it's very funny and very cutting and it's, it's lovely. It's just really top quality American sitcom writing. It's really good. And it's just about uh, an extended modern family. But Sophia Vergara uh, is uh, a Colombian, uh, Colombian American actress, and she plays a sort of younger wife of uh, the one of the chaps in the eldest generation. Of, so the, the the father slash grandfather has remarried a much younger, much fitter woman. All the way through Modern Family, I am, um, I think it's fair to say, palpably drooling over Sofia Vergara. I think I feel much more comfortable to express my uh, adoration of females to you, Chris, than I do of uh, celebrity men. Yeah, I am willing to do it, but you, like you, it. you don't seem to like that if quite so much. If you say I, I visibly rage and, and no. I pound the table no, with my fist. No, it's just I, I can tell that he's not as into it. I, <laughs> 
Like, just like... Kick oh, off, oh. don't I? No, he's lovely about Behind. it, but I think it's just... Throw you out of the house. I, well, I just I don't think you're necessarily going to even sort of stop me from doing that, but I don't think you enjoy it, whereas me drooling over someone fit that you can join in and agree with me on how fit they are is quite a... It's, it's, a, quite, it's a win-win situation. We can just enjoy that together as well. <laughs> wholesome family fun. Yeah. Uh, but yes, so uh, there and was... she was behind the Enigma gram the whole she, time. <laughs> she was. Uh, so yeah, that was a bit of a turn up for the books because although I've admired her from afar, I didn't know the feelings were reciprocated. Yeah, she seemed quite keen. Very, uh, so very, very keen, actually. Yeah, so, um, so would you recommend Enigma Grams? I would highly recommend Enigma Grams to anyone who's quite into puzzles or even just like sort of a casual puzzler. Uh, I thought they were all really good. I think you were panicking a little bit because uh, I think it's sort of uh, you um, you estimate. Because obviously, having received an enigmagram, you then researched what they were about, and you thought yes. they were going to take a bit longer than it took. But I will put that down to me being quite an avid puzzler. Yes, and and, and some of them were very room. taxing. Actually, it's just one or two of them. I kind of went, oh, right, yeah, like I've seen something like this before. I know mm. how this works. Um, but yeah, one or two of them are, were real head scratches. In fact, uh, I think. Oh, I did all of them on my own, but the last one, one of them anyway, I did actually have to go to the, you need a clue, if you need a clue on this one, go to this. And then it was suddenly like, ah, right. Okay. Yes, it was the last one. So I think they also do sort of get progressively harder. So we'll um, put the link but yeah, in the blurb. Yeah, can, uh, brilliant. Highly recommend. To get that if you want to buy one of those for a friend or family member. And yeah, what I think I saw, because they were, they were flogging them, not flogging them, they were sort of uh, advertising them for Father's Day. So what you could do on that was quite nice. So the, once the dad eventually got the, re the message, it was then, go look under your bed. And then his Father's Day gifts were under the bed. That's but like actually a, you could just do it like as a... That's like a serving suggestion. Uh, yeah, serving suggestion. You could just get a celebrity fitty to hit on your girlfriend. Uh, but uh, I'm all for that too. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I highly mean, recommend. Do it. And yeah, that's nice of her. But it was nice of you to sort of um, let let our love grow. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, would highly recommend. So I will put the link to that because they were great. Uh, and also, like particularly in lockdown, actually something really cool and uh, that you can sort of work on together. That's a bit stimulating that you don't have to leave the house. Right, we've got a lot. To we've got a lot get to get through. through. We've done twelve minutes of um, nonsense. We should talk about the uh, lovely surprise that yes. us, though. Well, I want to say today has been a bit of a roller coaster for me. Um, I have been all over the shop. Um, partly, um, uh, right, yesterday, really good day on the whole wedding planning front because we've smashed a bunch of decisions. Yeah. Turns out... It's really easy to make the decisions that don't cost money. <laughs> and then today, started looking into sort of other things to do with weddings and got a lot less enthusiastic. Because, um, yeah, it, that's depressing. Uh, so I got a li I got, oh, God, it's early days for me to, for me to be bridezillering, but I did get a bit emotional and poor old Chris had to just be like, it's okay. It's only been a few days. We don't have to make any decisions right now. Um, and then, uh, so I went for a nap because it all got too much. But then, uh, God, I, I'm a mess. Why am I telling the world what a mess I am? But yeah, so I'd gone to bed for a little nap because I needed to switch off because the world was just a bit much for me. Um, and, and then, then the I had a lovely... Said, no, we're the world knock on your door. Yeah, the world said, no, we're going to knock on your door. Um, and uh, it was... Absolutely uh, a wonderful, lovely surprise. We've mentioned, I think, uh, that uh, once a week there's like a street party that's for an hour, there's music playing. So it was today. Um, but what we didn't know is there been some skullduggery afoot and uh, some sort of sneaky sneaks working in the background. And uh, well, so the doorbell went. I was still upstairs. Chris answered it and then sort of slightly bemused sort of went uh, L, uh yes here <laughs> sort of pointed at the doorway so i came downstairs uh bleary eyed and in my pajamas as i usually am to be fair um and uh it was the first song of that uh and it was the neighbors uh congratulating us on our engagement 
There was an orchid, a bottle of pink bubbles, uh, and a card and a gift. It's booze, by the way, from... not bubble bath. No, no, booze. The best bubbles. Um, uh, and from all the neighbours congratulating us. And they were playing the song that we had just decided and only told one person who isn't even one of our neighbours what was going to be our um, wedding song that I walked down the aisle to. And we're not going to tell you what it was. No. Cause, because you'll all be walking down the yeah, aisle to it, still in our thunder. But they, were, they played that song. So- they said congratulations and played that song. And I had another little cry, but this time it was a good one. A little, um, a little happy cry, very touched, slightly self-conscious again because I was in my pajamas, my pajamas. Um, but then, so we then got the bubbles because uh, actually there's still some prosecco left from yesterday, so we mm. cr- whacked the rest of that in a glass, chucked the other one in the fridge, and went out the front and sat for an hour listening to the music. It was absolutely lovely. Through the bit of roller coaster, then I came in, and then Lucy got very unwell, and I had to call a vet and. Uh, so again, it was back into then slightly less fun. So today has been a roller coaster. Lucy is doing okay. Um, we'll some parasite tomorrow. She, yeah, and on, the vet's advice. And the vet's advice. Apparently, uh, you you have to get the dosage right, so you still need veterinary advice. But the medicine that they give dogs that is essentially paracetamol for dogs is uh, due to COVID out of stock everywhere, so they can't prescribe it at the moment. So she said, I if you know her weight, I can give you the dosage of her for paracetamol, which we did have. So she's had some paracetamol and now she didn't have any dinner and she's going to be on bland food for a few days and she should be okay. But yeah, she, she the hyperventilating fit, she had another one of those, but it was quite extended and she seemed quite unwell. It's probably that she's in a bit of discomfort, which is making her sort of panic a little bit and that's why she's panting and getting stressed. And, um, um, and we gave her to her paracetamol and some cheese, didn't we? Which is not yes, advice, not bland but... food, but how else are you supposed to get a... T- uh, a bad tasting half a paracetamol tablet in a upset dog so we had to wait till she was calmer and then put in a little bit of cheese um but then a little bit of cheese a little, little bit of cheese, little bit of uh, well, cheese. well it wasn't lots of cheese for a bad um, tummy but she needed something yeah. tasty to put it in um so hopefully she's going to be fine but we'll keep an eye on her she's taken herself off to bed now so i think that's quite a good sign because she has been largely not wanting to leave my side all day um yeah. hopefully it's just something that will kind of pass yeah the Right. Um, so um, that's sort of from personal perspective. Today's been a bit of an emotional roller coaster. I've been quite quick to burst into tears. Uh, sometimes good, sometimes bad. Um, but you quite nicely, uh, while you were sort of telling me it's all okay, uh, did point out that because I, I I don't I'm uh, pre lockdown. I'm not someone to burst into tears that easily. Uh, but oh crikey! Um, but I think you're right. Your advice was sort of like well, yes, you are being emotional. But I think because I've sort of mentioned, like, we're all in that top 2% of sort of our sort of emotional range at the moment. So then when you're stressed about something, it's very easy for all the stresses about all of the things to kind all of pile in. level stress that we're kind of constantly ignoring. Yeah, all, yeah, just kind of, so yeah, it was an overreaction um, because nothing was essentially wrong. But it was just sort of feeling very overwhelmed and then, like... Um, yeah, just sort of going like, oh, well, I like, I was really excited about having a really lovely wedding and then like starting to look at how much really lovely weddings cost. It then became, oh, no, I'm, like, I don't want it to be crap and, oh, and I don't want it to look like we've got caught. But it's, we just don't have a budget. So it's just, we're going to have to be inventive. So um, sorry to backtrack, though, yes. but I think we should thank... Uh, once again, our, our neighbours. Yes. For for that lovely so, congratulations. There's too many to name, but particularly to Harriet, uh, who mm. I suspect was the uh, instigator. Of instigator. That. And, and was the one that made me drag you out of bed. And sneaky sneaker, because she must have spoken to Elle to get the yeah. song choice. She, um, yes. And also to Jodie, who puts on the uh, actual street party and makes all the music happen and kind of organises the whole thing. Yes, but we had lots of very uh, well, nice well wishes from of, many uh, of the neighbours. There's too like many to name. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was very nice. nice. Uh, and yeah, and actually, at the again at the end when they're sort of uh, sort of closing off, there was another little sort of let's just have another round of applause for Ellie and Chris, which was very nice right, so uh, that, and very touching. That's a lovely, nice thing to talk about. I need to talk about wrestling now. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, any regular viewers will know that this part is normally when I talk about wrestling, that's normally a, a fun bit of the vlog for me. Oh, uh, I know what you're going to talk about. Not necessarily a fun bit of the vlog for everyone. <laughs> Um, the point at which you might notice I glaze over a little. But uh, <laughs> sadly today, 
bit more serious. Uh, I yes. haven't even got my wrestling bell sound effect. No. Nope. Seemed like that would be frivolous. Yeah. Uh, a couple of things. Well, first of all, just the ongoing global COVID situation. Um, you know, they kind of started off... Um, they kept doing wrestling, basically, when everything else was shut down. They've carried on. WWE and AEW, the two big companies uh, in America at the moment, have carried on doing wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, which isn't necessarily advisable, but, you know, I can't say... I've, Didn't they I've do been... some sort of shenanigans to get themselves declared? Because they, they were told not there to, was, and then they did, yeah, and they had a meeting, and, and then... Like, who I do they know in the government that they've kind backs of... Backs were scratched yes. and money might have exchanged hands, but then they were declared it's... essential businesses. <laughs> exactly. So they carried, How carried on going. Um, yeah. And they haven't had fans in. They've had empty arenas. But then they've kind of had people on the roster like kind of acting in a capacity of like crowds at ringside. And, kind yeah. of, and WWE, they they introduced like hockey um, sort of perspex screens like you'd have at a hockey... Oh, right, okay, yeah, yeah. So that the fans would be separated from the acts, but they weren't particularly social distance behind those screens. And then WWE, having introduced those screens, realised, oh, these are just a good prop. So they've had things like wrestlers throwing each other through the screens or having people dancing through the crowd behind the screens. And you're like, and well, you're, well that they're not really doing the job then, are the they? Nominal task that they're supposed to be doing. But, <laughs> um, and also, uh, it turns out someone, some cast or crew member at WWE, has been diagnosed with COVID, which we've oh, had some days and tapings. Um, and so have they tested everybody else that was well, involved? Well, apparently they tested everyone once and kind of left it at that, is allegedly. And also the rumour is they told people that they couldn't wear masks at the screenings. You know, if they want to wear masks, they have to stay home. So it's it's all... It's There's all a kind lot of, of moral... like Because they've sort of said, like, it's up to the acts, it's their choice. But if you are somebody who this is your career and your career based on is based on getting screen time there is an element of pressure to go well i have got these concerns but if i don't go someone else will take my place and i won't be written into the stories and i will lose all of the momentum that i've been working on for all these years so essentially it kind of feels a bit immoral to be asking people to put themselves in that because position because very... they... although they say yes it's their choice but is it really? And, it's, and if they like, get written out of stories, it's hard to, to prove well that was because I didn't yeah. turn up. It's, they well, can no, just we say just it haven't got anything. What creative hasn't got anything for you? Yeah. You know? uh, but yeah, it seems a bit dodgy so ground a, already. Yeah, a lot of stuff coming out. But then, worse yet, uh, in the last twenty, well, not worse yet. Like, what has happened in the last twenty-four hours has been like a positive development, uh, but it's revealed some quite dark stuff. Right. Okay. Um, What's that then? There's a hashtag. Um, oh, do you know I forgot the hashtag's gone right. I've got a mental block on the hashtag. But you remember do you when you pause it and you can look. Uh, yes. We are so professional. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, yeah, the hashtag is hashtag speaking out. Right. Which is basically, I mean, it, it's people speaking out about um, sexual harassment in uh, the wrestling business. Right. And so is it is it essentially of an ilk of the kind of Me Too movement. Yes. Now, when the Me Too movement was happening, that was a big surprise. I'll be honest, this feels like sort of less of a surprise to me in some ways, only because the Me Too, when the Me Too movement happened, it kind of swept through Hollywood, and then there was like kind of a spate of kind of football coaches that were accused of stuff and things, and it kind of felt like, well, this will probably get round to wrestling. You know, there's a lot of people on the road, there's a lot of people... Um, Sorry, there's odd cat behaviour again, but I'll try and ignore it. But, uh, you know, and it never really happened. But there's, so then when it's finally happened, it's like, like, none of this, like, everything that's come out has been new information to me. Hmm. None of these are rumours that I've heard. Like, in the way that people said, oh, well, we'd heard rumours about, like, Louis C.K. for years, but we didn't have any... Didn't have anything concrete like, and I didn't, talk. I, ha- as a wrestling fan, I hadn't heard any of these um, specific rumours right. or anything, but it doesn't entirely surprise me um that you know wrestling has had its own me to happen eventually if it's happening in hollywood and it's happening in football and other areas of the well, culture well it's where fame it's, and um, money and, and, and it's sort and of pressure and, and on people who want to make it in a business that's going to happen on sorry being mental so people, again. people it's going to happen it's going to happen everywhere that's why it's not just in fame but i guess it's just that there's an added added element of the pressure for fame and well there's going to be a million other people who are happy to take your place kind of feeling 
Um, hmm. Yeah, and it's um, and also you won't work again if you talk people, about it. And exactly, that sort and of people thing. wanting opportunity, and particularly in women's wrestling, you know, and just so lots of things have come out. Now I'm not going to talk uh, specifically about any of the but maybe look up the, the hashtag. Things. Look up the hashtag um, because it's um, I like I say I, I'm I'm of the belief that when these things happen, we should believe the women Absolutely. and support them that are coming out with their stories. Uh, that said, not to just be, be too arbitrary about it, but actually, it is important to say it isn't always only women that are coming no, out and, with these and it is, um, accusations. It's just and it has been some men in this the case majority, as, as well. But actually, um, we should we should believe the victims. Exactly. Yes. So you're absolutely right. Um, and while I do believe a lot of these stories that have come out, um, a lot of them are at this point just stories. They're, they're police they're investigations that have been launched off the back on, of these. Yeah. Certain people have been stripped of uh, their titles from certain promotions and things. So there's going to be, uh, and I'm sure there's more stuff going to emerge. So until there's more kind of concrete stuff to talk about, mm. I don't necessarily want to be kind of naming names or kind no. of saying anything now because, like, I'm not an authority on any of this. No. I'm just a, an idiot with a, a Twitter account and a, a WWE network a subscription. Account. Yeah, but. Um, <laughs> You know, I'm not a part of the wrestling industry, yeah. and it's not for me to... Yeah, but you wouldn't be able to really sort of throw your own two cents in. That said, the information's out there, you know, check out the hashtag and and, and look into that. But it's it's kind of a... Well, like I say, it's a double-edged sword, kind of. It's very grim to hear about and very sad that it's going on. And, you know, and you sort of hope none of your favourite wrestlers... It doesn't seem to have been any, like, massive, massive superstar names yet. Mm. But you sort of go, oh, is this going to affect some personal favourite or whatever or yeah. what's going to emerge next. It is, it's a weird um, side effect when these things come out, isn't it? Because you feel awful for being sort of flippant about it. But, like, mm. when these accusations come out and it's someone you like that is being accused of something, it's very much you sort of go, oh, I liked him. Yeah, and you're not, just sort of like, oh, that's, no, not him, that's no. quite a selfish yeah. reaction. It's just because so, you don't want to see your heroes fall, I guess. But... Um, yeah, it can be sort of like, oh, I hope it's not somebody that I care about. Like, exactly. uh, but it's, so, I think that's a normal response. But yeah, you sort of like, well, so obviously actually, there's bigger issues. So like say, it's not my place to kind of name names here, at least until there's something more concrete mm. going on. But hopefully, uh, as sad as it all is, uh, it's there's like a kind of net positive of people yeah. telling their stories it's and good speaking out, and the industry if the, the being new affected by norm it and changing is and growing, that and, yeah. it's not tolerated, and people do speak out, and people support people for speaking out. But so that is to be encouraged. Speaking of Twitter, though... I was going to say, that was exactly the segue I was going to oh, make. We're oh, so we got some positive news from Twitter, depending on your political leaning. Uh, but for us, oh, it's good news. Uh, news that I positively revel in. But old uh, Haiti Hopkins... Um, yeah, Katie Hopkins has been uh, not just sort of... Because quite often Twitter will sort of throw in an arbitrary, temporary suspension of your Twitter account. You're not allowed to post for 48 hours or whatever. Arbitrary and kind of bullshit. She's been permanently banned from having any presence on Twitter, uh, which is brilliant because she's hateful. Uh, and I have uh, only glanced uh, at uh, the comments sections of this today. For the most part, uh, quite polarizing, as always. Pa ha Haiti? Katie Hopkins is quite a polarizing figure. Some people. Uh, admire her for her uh, willingness to uh, tell it like it is and, and say things that other people are too afraid to say. And other people are right um, mm -hmm. because she's awful. Uh, and yes, uh, free speech is important in society. Uh, first of all, from a legal perspective, uh, if you take on a Twitter account, you have to... Um, abide by their terms of service there is no such thing as free speech when you're using a business to sort of do it um and so she was essentially inciting hatred and twitter has every right to say no 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 um so first of all she that they're perfectly legally entitled to say stop it uh but secondly uh freedom of speech does not mean freedom from consequences if you want to spow vitriol and hatred i can't stop you doing that but i am entitled to not like it, and I am entitled to uh, repost, and uh, you should uh, see sort of consequences to your vicious, vile, and horrible, hateful actions. If you incite hatred, uh, and then people hate you, uh, you should be able to sort of suck it up because you brought this on yourself. And the thing is, Katie Hopkins 
is still entitled to have her own website that she yeah. pays for and she puts all her horrible views on. Mm. Um, but, you know, Twitter don't have and to YouTube support it. don't have to kind of put her... And what, that's one thing that is also there. wonderful because actually there are a fair few and they're usually right wing. But not always. But there are a fair few sort of horrible people on the internet who have made careers out of saying mm -hmm. terrible things, being horrible, horrible people. And giving them, taking away their platforms works. They then, there have been people who've done sort of oh, awful like uh, pickup artists and uh, hate hateful sort of horrible incel types who've like gone on tours of other countries and actually then they get deplatformed and then their tours get cancelled and then they bitch and moan because uh the world's unfair because it's being very mean to them but it's just like no you're reaping what you sow you're being hateful and you're having consequences to the things that you say if you've made yourself famous and you've turned yourself into a celebrity by being deliberately awful and offensive you need to own that when and you have some negative if you're being negative and hateful and then people have negative hateful responses to you you need to suck that up well katie hopkins is just like a businesswoman essentially who got into the public eye from being on the apprentice yeah and it kind of shows just kind of how arbitrary you know because then she started getting work as like a commentator on things yeah and it's like, columnist well, she's not, and sort of she wasn't an social expert commentary. on anything yep. she was just someone who a, a she made a career out of saying really and, divisive yeah. things. And, and there's an argument to be made that, you know, she doesn't even believe all Oh, the I don't she think says, she does. But she says them out of kind of cynical desire for kind of I think publicity she, fame, she which must have a certain is like, just as bad. Oh, yeah. Believing I, them I because, think, if anything, you know, it's like there's all, it's almost worse because at least yeah. if you're sort of going out there and you're really, like, even if I disagree with what you're saying, like, I can respect you sort of fervently speaking your truth and trying to sort of uh, express your firm beliefs. At least it's honest. Um, but I think she does say things too in, to incite reactions and, and, and be divisive and, and upsetting. And there is that little important part of her soul missing mm. whereby she doesn't care if what she says hurts people, has... I think her argument would be, I'm just saying what I think. Other people can do what they like with that information. But thing is, if you are essentially, you've got a huge platform and you're spreading horrible, abusive bile, uh, particularly when it's about generalised groups of people, but also when it's sort of aimed at an individual. Thankfully, she's already had her comeuppance in that she had to declare bankruptcy and lose, lost her home because she... Um, said some awful stuff about uh, I, can't, I can't actually remember the name of the, the lady it was against but she sued her and won yay um, but she was still doing it she's still making a career from saying these awful things with at least no remorse or conscience about it so I'm glad she's not allowed to be on Twitter I'm sure she'll find some crack in a rock already, that she can still do it stuff from but... programs have already sorry TV kind of stations and kind of current affairs programs have already kind of got wise to her and stopped looking yeah. and stuff. Well, and also recently, I don't know if we mentioned in the blog, but Nigel Farage got his show cancelled on, yeah, um, on I think we did mention actually. Uh, yeah, was happy about that too. Uh, because I think, I th I'm hoping, it's, it's, it's only a little hope because I only dare to have little hopes at the mm. moment because the world's a dumpster fire. Uh, but I'm wondering if there's a little bit of backswing, like everything's been, like everything has been sort of falling further and further right and it seems to have been getting more and more hateful and intolerant and maybe just sort of everything that's going on is highlighting the inequalities and the unfairness and also people are uh, being forced into positions where they are perhaps relying on people from those marginalized groups to help them and to support each other and to look like particularly uh, I'm thinking with the Black Lives Matter movement and uh, the disproportionate number of uh, people of color that are working in the health service so people who are hateful horrible people who then end up in hospital being looked after by the people they hate and then they're sort of like oh actually they're real people that are nice and do good things for the country and I'm actually awful um, like there's a bit of that going on and I think even when the Daily Mail is saying ah oh, the country's got a bit too intolerant 
doesn't it? Like, that's a harbinger of either the apocalypse or that we're in the matrix. Because um, that just doesn't happen, does it? But uh, So maybe we're just getting a little bit more momentum, or maybe the momentum going that way is running out and we're starting to pull backwards. Maybe. The <laughs> mental cats, sorry. So that, um, yeah. Katie Hopkins is awful and I'm glad she's not on Twitter. I'm sure she'll be fine. I'm not wishing her sort of uh, like a life on the streets or anything. Yeah. I'm sure she'll do fine. But I don't want it to be in the public eye because she's awful. Uh, yeah, and it's, she's one of those people who thrives on kind of publicity and, mm. and controversy. The best so thing you can like do is ignore her. her. Exactly. And normally I wouldn't even mention her on the blog because if she'd said something controversial, but just her actually being banned from a platform that, yeah. let's face it, gets so much more attention than this vlog will ever do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're, I think, not, I think it's very we're not adding to I any think of it's, that. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to kind of <laughs> snagger off a bit today. Yeah. Um, we're basically out of time. Yes. Uh, and we've so many important news stories that we didn't get well, around to. There's two, there's uh, three very important ones. So I am going to say what they are, and we will talk them about them in more depth tomorrow. Yes. First one is the announcements that were made today of uh, lockdown restrictions being eased in Wales. Mm -hmm. uh, and also the news about the current um, R8 in Wales. Lowest in the country, guys. Well done. Smashing um, it. Smashing it. Well done, Wales. Um, so actually, there's a little bit of reward in store for some lockdown restrictions to be eased that's all good we'll talk about that in more detail um we have to talk about the absolute shit show that is the uh, track and trace app because it just gets worse um i, I can probably summarize that actually because i think i said yesterday that they've said we're going to work on this we're actually we're changing it we're now doing it as a hybrid with um the app that has been worked on uh, with Google and Apple and this is going to be brilliant we've done lots of meetings on this and this is our new plan Apple today announced that this is the first they've heard of it so there you go that's just it's like beating. face palms all round guys like at least if you're gonna lie like check that it isn't immediately fact checkable by the company you're lying about um, so yeah, that's just a level of just like, guys, you're not even trying now. Um, so that's kind of hilarious if it wasn't so awful. Uh, and the biggest one, which is an absolute travesty um, from this absolute shit show of a government, is how they have treated uh, student nurses who... Uh, all are, after being asked, uh, uh, begged essentially, um, to fast track their degrees. So if they were in the last six months of their degrees, to suspend their degrees, they would be allowed to work without their qualifications because we need them so desperately because of COVID. Uh, they have gone, right, we don't need you anymore and cancelled their contracts. They are now left without income and without qualifications because they are not in their university degrees anymore and they have no income coming in. So that is essentially like taking bit, everybody who was on the mate. front line in the trenches, they somehow managed to survive and then you just leave them there. Like just go like, all right, yeah, fuck you. Like it's an absolute... I don't know how these people sleep at night. I like, and if we let that go accepted, then um, yeah, we've so got we've died as any kind of caring nation. So, so more like, details on more all of that, on that tomorrow, tomorrow. Apart from how the powers that be sleep at night, because I doubt we're going to fix that. Well, figure that out by tomorrow, <laughs> are we? We won't know. We'll have no more information. No, on that. no unless, information. Unless Boris or Dominic get in touch. Feel feel free to give us a call. We'll feel have you as a guest guys. on the blog, yeah. Bojo. <laughs> Against it. Um, oh god. Oh. oh I don't want to talk to it. Uh <laughs> anyway, so yeah, we've gone over as ever, but there's so much going on that it's mental. So oh. um we uh will catch you again tomorrow for day ninety-two of lockdown. Uh in the meantime, like and subscribe, give us a share. Um uh give your nana a ring, she's probably lonely. Bye. Bye.